Hmm. <laughs> I've seen worse. Right, let's get about uh, put some good metal in there and cutting out this crusty metal. And I think the problem with these Daihatsu Kopens, apart from being made from the thinnest metal in the world, is that their underbody technique wasn't the greatest. This black sort of sealant doesn't seem to adhere to the silver underneath and just over time goes brittle and just flakes off like so. <laughs> then that exposes the silver which obviously can be hit by rocks and that just flakes off and then that exposes the wafer thin metal and then that rots out. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this bad bad stuff in here, shoot some cavity wax and then some uh, rust encapsulator inside the seals. I'll do it from both ends because guess what there's a hole on the other end as well. And uh, make a pack panel, get that welded in and then we'll pick off as much of this loose on here as we can and uh, give this a new coat of rust um, encapsulator and then I've got some war underbody um, protection which is glass filled and it's got a sound ending in it as well and uh, hopefully that should make it last for a few more years. I've seen Copens where they've rotted through here now when we went to look at this car I took my trusty screwdriver and gave it a good stab and it's not gone through there so we're, we're not as bad as some people so we'll just uh, we'll get this cleaned up cut out any bad stuff and then I'll bring you back right I made a start on cutting out some of the rot and cleaning it up a little bit and it's not too bad it's gone a little bit on the sill it looks like it's sort of the outer skin and you can see a bit of the inner skin and then it blew through down here here and this sort of the pinch joint is uh, and it's plenty of metal there, it's solid, but it had a little bit of corrosion on it. So I've just gone back sort of halfway, and then I'll when I do the rear, I'll work this way. But um, poke and ye shall find many holes. <laughs> I knew it was a bit too thin, I was just dreaming, really thinking, oh, maybe I could save that bit, but. I gave it a good few hard wax and uh, created some lovely holes. I've cleaned up all around it. And when you get from going from dark to shiny, then you know that's good metal, albeit very thin metal, but better than so thin you can see through it. <laughs> so I've uh, got a big old bit to make there, but that's not a problem. That's what welders and sheet metal are for. I'll bring you back when I've got some more. I'll probably get this sort of cut out, cut the, the, the worst of it out. And then we can start making some templates. Right, I've been playing with uh, Weetabix and Treddy's boxes. And what I've come up with is I'm going to tuck that against this the thick seam down there. And then that will be a big patch. I'm going to cut that out and make that into there. And then rather than doing the bit that originally went sort of halfway in here, I'm going to cap it straight at the end because this end's crispy. So new metal will join new metal and it will join this good metal up here. So in three places that will be good. And then this bit will be open as a drain. 
that's the plan. Thing is, there is no there's no rules. It's just you know do do what you need to do to get the job done. Uh, I'm I am by no means an expert at bodywork. I've done it a handful of times. Personally, I hate doing it. I love mechanics. I love nuts and bolts, working on engines, but bodyworks. Ugh. But it's got to be done. So if you want an MOT, we've got to make patches. Right, we've got the uh, the rock cut out. That's the offending piece. I think that's uh, expired. Now I've just cleaned up around the edges and transferred the old template onto some steel. So we'll get that cut out and then we'll, um, we've got to put a nice curve in it so I might sort of find a tree that has a similar sort of curve and just persuade it around that a little bit then offer it up and then um, we can probably get a couple of tacks in and start sort of you know massaging it into shape and then I'll, I'll do the end cap just offer my cardboard up and make adjustments if need be once that bit's in and uh, go from there I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when I've got some more progress all right we're getting there it's uh obviously there's gaps but when I start you know actually fettling it into place that that all closes up so um we're gonna get a few sort of tacks in various places and then we can just sort of fettle it a little bit more and um and we can make our end cap and um before we weld the end cap on we're going to squirt the, the cavity wax inside there but yeah it's uh It's coming along, coming along, coming along. <laughs> we'll uh, crack on. Excuse the uh, welder noise in the background. It's not pretty. But it's on there. <laughs> That'll look a lot nicer once I clean up the welds. Uh, what I'll do is I'll use a flap wheel, grind it down, any little pinholes, I'll just go in again and fill over. And uh, that should look quite nice. Certainly a lot better than rusty holes. I'll um, put this down and uh, do some grinding and bring you back. There we go, the grinder hides many sins. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it because um, this has got that texturised rubber stuff on it which it's going to have a whole load of um, paint and all sorts on there, which will, you know, hide that some textured stuff, and then only that bit will be silver and um, a little bit of filler. Not too bad. And we've got. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there. Hang on. Good penetration. And happy with that, nice and strong. I'll probably make remake this end cap now that that's on there because that one's not quite the right size, but I can use that as a kind of a template. And uh, we're getting there. And then once we've done all of that, we can tackle the hole underneath. Hold tight. <laughs> There we go. More holes. <laughs> Oddly, I mean, the rest of it's all right. It's you know, generally quite good, but in just random places, we should probably link to this because it's right where that was. So water was obviously getting in and running through and rotted that bit out as well. So plus someone might have jacked it up there and you know caused it to crack. So we'll tackle that bit next. But for now, I'm going to go and have some dinner. We'll carry this on tomorrow. Uh, just for reference, if anyone wants to do something like this, um, 
all the work that you've seen me do today has took about well, I started at about one o'clock it's about half past five now so you know four or five hours um, but it's not too bad you just take your time and like I say I'm not an expert I've not literally done hardly any body work I mean this is probably the real first sort of body work that I've actually ever undertaken um, I really don't have the patience for it um, but you get in the zone and just you know whittle up bits of metal and fill up rusty holes and stuff like this can live a little bit longer <laughs> right that's it for now I'll catch you in the morning hey guys well it's the next day and uh, I gave it a little bit of thought this morning and I was originally just going to cap across the end but I wasn't taking into account the spare wheel liner which if I just put this up into place that sort of sits slightly indented so if I'd capped it completely off I wouldn't have been able to fit this and I did think about cutting it straight across but I thought well it's probably good to protect the end of this from stones and rocks you know as the wheel drives so I played around with my template and went for the inside as it was originally. That's pretty snug, so push that in there and weld that in like so. Once I've done the, the spraying inside. And again, same process, I just kept making a cardboard template and adjusting it as I needed. And when I was happy that the cardboard fitted, convert it onto a sheet of steel and then you know grinded this just to tweak it to fit um, so I'm pretty happy with that now so uh, next stage I'm going to tackle the hole underneath that I showed you yesterday and um, I'll film a little bit of that as well and then we'll move on to the back end of the seal that's got a matching hole and then we can spray the stuff in and do the painting I might put some um, just some zinc primer on this to protect it while I'm doing the other stuff because I don't know how long it will take, you know, how many days between and obviously bare steel and um, Scottish weather would result in rust. So give it a sporting chance. I'll um, get set up and uh, bring you back when I've got some progress. So I cut out the rot on this sort of box section under here. Hang on. And I had a little peer up inside and I could see sort of this corrosion in this this you can't see anything, there's my hand. I could see all this corrosion in this this is the underside of the wheel arch. So obviously what had caused the seal and all of this is all interlinked. And I managed to poke through from the wheel arch side. And poked through from the wheel arch side here and this inner floor pan goes through to the carpet <laughs> so you remember when I said about this bit being nice and solid hang on put some light on the subject that was the bit that I said I'd poked around with it was solid I guess I didn't poke hard enough <laughs> so we've got a little bit more patching to do and again if anyone else is sort of taking this on it's you know the more you poke the more you find 
but you do get to a point where you stop finding. Hang on, where's my screwdriver? I can't find it. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that you think, oh, what's the point? You know, it's just a rusty bag of crap. But it's there's still plenty of solid metal. I mean, like this bit where I've cut up to here, this is, what, 1.2 mil thick. And if you feel all the way inside there and up the sides, you can feel that that metal has still got its original thickness, bar, you know, this surface corrosion. So what you tend to find is when cars rot, you know, it is confined to little areas where it's a water trap or, you know, it's a pocket where dirt has collected and then, you know, that contains moisture because you need air and moisture and metal. Um, but, you know, if you were to, you know, really go over it, you would find that at least 80, 90% of it is actually still really solid, bar some surface corrosion. So it's worth tackling these little jobs because... You know it, they're not too bad um and once even bits like this that, are, that have got some corrosion on once that's got some layers of you know rust encapsulator and in the underbody sealant and you know cavity wax and all of that three layers of protection you know that will last easily 20 30 years which you know it's going to be more than enough for for my use um and it's far cheaper to, you know, fix things up than it is and buy a brand new car and have a huge car footprint. So we shall continue patching. I'll um, bring you back when I've cut out probably some of this and we'll start making cardboard templates. Same process as before. See you in a bit. And I've just pulled the carpet back so you can see the view from the other side foot ventilation that will explain the slightly damp carpet perhaps yeah. not too bad I'll um, have someone on fire duty when you're welding and you can't see you know the other side it's a good idea to have someone in the car um, with a damp cloth uh, or a few damp cloths just because paint when you weld paint can sort of start to catch fire and if it goes unnoticed it could go up and catch something else so I pulled the carpet well out of the way in any sort of soundproofing not that there well there is a little bit of felt attached to the underside of the carpet um, I think they were quite keen to keep uh, keep weight down on this car so everything's rather thin <laughs> everything so, anyway, let's crack on. So I've just cut out that section there. I've joined this cut up with the one I did underneath. What you have is you have this lapped skin then you have the the actual floor pan skin so they're two separate things um just I don't know if i was pointing the camera in the right direction there i was too busy looking at what my hands were doing and not what the camera was looking at so yeah you've got this outer skin which is part of that box section this is the inner floor pan skin which carpet would be up there So now you've now you cut it away, you can see, you know, a lot clearer. What it's like, and it makes a lot more sense. It's less, less daunting. And um, I'll continue to cut out the, the rotten floor pan section. And then I'll come up with a plan of what I'm going to make to put new metal in there.
on that template. Cut out the sheet still. I've done the same for the inside. Don't know if I can get it from here. I've started bending the inside one, so uh, I'm going to weld, sort of tack weld the inside in first. Where this wheel uh, floor pan rolls up and meets this wheel arch, this is where the, the the two plates that I've made. Sorry, I was pointing the camera in the wrong place again. Where the two plates, the inner plate that I'm making and this outer plate, where they join, they'll be welded like on you know together. So you see, it's a bit. I've gone through again in here. It's a bit thin, but they both overlap that, and they'll be welding onto each other so it'll be like two mil thick um, so that should eliminate the you know risk of blowing through when I'm welding um, so that should work out quite nicely I'll get some tack welds in and then I'll uh, film a bit more well, we've got a little bit of a uh, bead going on with some weld there tiny little blow through there but I can fill that in and I'm going to go back inside the car and weld the panel in so you'll probably see a little line of weld across here where we penetrate into this where i said about it being two layers uh, i started to grind it off a little bit there and i'll grind all this off clean it up go in and fill in any holes and uh, we're getting there okay after lots of grinding and welding this is the inside not pretty but it's better than a rusty hole and um, I'll show you the outside I've got to crawl under the door hang on a moment and I'll just bring the light round okay, and this is the uh, the wheel arch side I think the lights just uh, a bit too powerful and reflecting off of it there we go as you can see I had to I was blowing holes when I was welding the top edge so I had to put a little patch in until we got to some solid metal so when I was welding up the very top of this patch it wasn't blowing through or same down the side so I know that that's thick enough so I'm happy with that so that's all done and I put the light through I've got really powerful LED um, you know work lights and uh, I put those through on the inside and come around here on the outside and there was no light shining through so I've not got any holes little pinholes or anything like that so I'm happy with that so that will just get a coat of probably just zinc primer just to protect it for now before I do all the fancy stuff and now I need to make up probably two patches for that I might do it in one with a 90 degree bend here but um, depends how it sort of wants to sit so it might end up being two and then I'll sort of beat this round to follow that curve and join them together and uh, get that bit done and then then we can move on to the back <laughs> right I'll bring you back once I'm doing some other stuff probably cardboard templates and stuff okay so just a bit tricky to do holding the camera and I'll offer these up. We made a cardboard template. Which we transferred onto metal. And then I put a bend in it. I marked where to bend it. Put a couple of reliefs there. So that if I offer that up now. see those two reliefs sit in this sort of indented section there and if I go around the other side hang on this is looking at it from the back of the car looking forward to the front of the car whereas I was the other way around that's the the general idea So I'll get the edges where I'm going to weld cleaned up to, to shiny and then uh, 
we'll start tack welding that into place. Get in there. I think before I do, I might spray some um, stuff in here first. That might be an idea. I'll bring you back in a bit. I uh, brushed some of the rust encapsulator up in there because it'd be easier to get to some of the tricky edges. And I used a, a, a strike brush for doing the edges and then brushed in there and then that's had two coats now. And now I can cap that off. And then once all the welding's done, I'll go back in through one of these access holes and spray the rust encapsulator in there with the with the lance and then once that's dry I'll spray the uh, carroty wax on top and I've also painted inside the sill area again it's going to be done with the um, with the lance you know the extension probe lance once it's capped off but it's easier to sort of brush you know all the edges and stuff in there while it's open a bit of extra protection so i'm going to go ahead and get that uh, plate that we uh, shaped wherever it is get that bit welded on and uh, we'll move forward okay we've got the uh, plate fully welded in i haven't ground it down yet but um some right around there. Again, not pretty, but uh, once we grind it down and fill up any holes, that'll be fine. Okay, I've got the end cap welded in and ground down the welds on the plate underneath. Uh, again, not pretty, but um, you know, we can all do perfect welds on a nice welding table on a workbench sitting on a chair. But uh, realistically, when you're welding really thin metal upside down in awkward places, this is generally how it comes out. <laughs> There's probably experts out there that can do it, but I'm not one of them. So it is what it is the main thing is we've got penetration on the welds um we've got new metal in there and not rusty metal and like i said before i'm going to do seam sealer over all the welds then a coat of the rust encapsulator as a primer then a coat of the war underbody um, chassis paint and inside will all be sprayed with the cavity wax and the sorry the rust encapsulator and then the cavity wax so once that's all on there you won't see my rubbish welds <laughs> and let me just uh underneath again that's the plate that we welded in and again i've ground down the welds as best as i can But uh, certainly better than um, rusty, rusty holes. So uh, I'm going to have lunch now and then I'll come back and I shall put some rust encapsulated paint on this. Actually, seam sealer first because I think you can overpaint seam sealer. So I'll do that first and uh, I'll bring you back when I've got some more progress. Right, I've got a happy belly now and uh, back on to the Copen. Um, I found before lunch, after I stopped filming, I found another hole in the floor, which I um, I didn't film, but um, I basically cut out the rot, made a template, usual scenario, cardboard template, transferred it to metal. And that was that section there. It's sort of, that's where we were working. You know that box chassis section and that's the front of the the seal and just a little bit further back there was a there was a tiny hole and i just kept poking and it sort of grew 
as they do. So um, I made a plate for there and welded that in. I haven't ground down the weld yet, I'll do that in a minute. And um, I had a sort of a, I had a go with a wire wheel on the angle grinder and just sort of started going over some of the uh, rough bits and um, just to see what it was like and it's it's fine it's just very very mild corrosion on there this is the original under seal then you've got a like this silver paint and then you have the bare metal um, obviously I'm doing the whole I will be doing the whole underside of the car once I've got all the welding done I'm in two minds whether to remove the under seal completely uh, and start you know start afresh or whether to leave where it's adhered and good and just remove where it is sort of flaking you see like bits see like if you go a bit here that I haven't touched you see here's a hole and uh, you know just a chassis hole and around it the, the under seals flaking off but obviously that bit there it's still adhered to you know if you you scrape it with a screwdriver or something To be fair, no, it's all fucking coming off. That is how that is how rubbish I had to original chassis stuff is. Look, I'm not even hitting that hard, and it's just literally just falls off. Like that is the lightest of touches. Barely touching it. It just falls off. So you imagine you're driving along and a stone comes up. Ping! That's why you get all these random holes because it's just. Well, <laughs> I think they forgot to put sticky stuff in it. Or key up the surface or do something. So. Yes, I am going to take it all off and start again. Because it's only just going to fall off, isn't it? And if you paint over it, what you've painted over is going to fall off because it's not adhering to anything. So we shall do that. Anyway, let's get those welds ground down. I thought I had some seam sealer, but I haven't. So I've ordered some, so that'll be a couple of days until it arrives. So while I'm waiting on that, I thought I'd have a poke around now the front's pretty much done. I'll poke around at the problems at the back. This is uh, a few holes in the sill. Most of the end of the sill is missing. There's a inner hole. And there's a all of this <laughs> there's a good bit and then there's a bad bit that's plastic that'll be fine and then under here quite a bit of the inner wheel arch is missing that'll be fun I'm going to do that bit last and concentrate on doing the seal. So it'll be a bit similar to the front. We'll make a, a curved panel. And that will obviously come and fill up this section here. And then we'll have a sort of a, maybe a little bit to fill in. And plus a bit inside there to do as well. Um, this pinch seam where th you know, three or four bits of the car all joined together. It's, it's ballooned and expanded. I'm going to poke around with it, but um, I think we can get away with uh, just protecting that. A little bit, little bit crispy at the top. Um, until I start poking, I don't know what the rest of the inner wheel arch is like, but we shall see. <laughs> the joys of rusty Japanese cars. Right, I should do some more poggling and cutting and uh, see how we get on. 
Right, I've got some cardboard sculpted. <laughs> there's, I think there's about four or five bits in there. Um... Take control,